What's up guys, we're back with another Swift interview coding challenge. And today I'm gonna to be showing you a sorting algorithm called Merge Sort in Swift. And I've actually been asked to implement Merge Sort during one of my phone screen interviews, so hey, you never know. All right, let's dive in. Before we dive into the code, I wanna give a huge hat tip to Thomas Hanning and his blog. Uh, he has a ton of great Swift tutorials. I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, this blog actually really helped me understand uh, how Merge Sort worked and how to code it up in Swift. So uh, gotta give credit where credit is due. He has a great blog, definitely go check it out. Okay, so at a high level, Merge Sort is really done in two steps. The first step is you keep chopping your array in half until each element is in its own single array. And then once you have each element in its own single array, then you start combining those array while sorting them through the process. Let me walk you through that. So here we have our array at the top of eight numbers. They're just randomized, jumbled. And the first step again is to keep chopping it in half until you get each number in its own array. As you can see here, we have eight individual arrays, each containing its own number. And now that we have each element in its own array, now we can start combining them. And we combine them two at a time. I put these red lines here to kind of separate them for you. So you see we have seven and three, one and eight, five and four, two and six. All right, let's start combining them. So the way we combine these arrays is we compare the first element in the left array and the first element in the right array. Whichever one is less, we append it to a new array. Now in this particular circumstance, we only have one item in each array, so they both happen to be the first item. But you'll see how that plays out as the array grows. So first let's compare seven and three. Let's create our new array here. Uh, three is less than seven, so we append that one first, so it's three comma seven. Then now looking at one and eight, this one is already uh, in order, so we have one comma eight. And then here, five and four, four is smaller, so four gets appended first, so four comma five. And then here we have two and six, this again is already in order, so we have two comma six. And then this just continues to play out. So again, we're comparing the first elements in the left and the right array. So we're gonna compare three to one in this case. Uh, one is less than three, so one goes in there first. And then we go ahead and remove it from the array. Now uh, three. Now we compare three and eight, because eight is now the first element, because one is gone. Three is less, so we go ahead and append that. And we get rid of the three here. Now we compare seven and eight. Seven is less, uh, and then we get rid of the seven. And then now uh, eight gets appended uh, here as well. So now that array is in order. Uh, and then same thing over here. Compare four to two. Two goes first. Two is gone from the array. Compare four and six. Then you get four. Four is gone from the array. Now five and six. Now five goes down here. Five is gone from the array. And then you just bring uh, six down. And then finally, we just rinse and repeat to get the final array. So we're comparing one and two, again, because they're the first elements. Uh, one goes in there because it's less, get rid of one. Now we're comparing three and two, two comes down, get rid of the two, and you guys see where I'm going, but I'm gonna finish it out anyway. Now we compare seven and six, uh, six is less, that's fine, get rid of the six. And then now um, we would just append this array because uh, this array is automatically in order because we've been sorting it the whole time. So now we can just bring down, because there's nothing to compare it to in the right array, we can just bring down uh, seven and eight and just append the whole contents of the left array to the end. And now you see here we have a sorted array. And that is merge sort. So as you just saw in that illustration, merge sort is really composed of two steps. First you split up the array and then you merge them all together. Let's talk about splitting up the array first. Now this function we're about to write is, is our main function, and this is where we're actually gonna call our merge function. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna write about 90% of this function, then we're gonna switch to our merge function, write all of that, and then come back to this function and finish it off. Okay, so here on line four, our merge sort function is going to take in an array, and this is the array that we're gonna sort, and then it returns another array of ints, uh, which is gonna be our sorted array. So again, this one's gonna be unsorted, it's gonna spit out a sorted one, and for right now, we're just returning an empty array, we'll fix that later. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna check before we start splitting up these arrays is to make sure the array has more than one object, right? You can't split an array that only has one object. So let's do that. Okay, so again, we're just checking that with a guard statement. So what this is doing is basically if array.count is greater than one, we'll go ahead and continue on with the rest of our code that doesn't exist yet. Uh, however, if array.count is less than one, we'll go into our else statement and we're just gonna return the array. Again, this is only gonna go into the else statement if the array is, has one object or less. So if that is the case, we can't split it up anymore. We're just gonna return that array that has the single object in it. Okay, so now that we know that our array has more than one object, let's split it up. All right, so here on lines 10 and 11, we're just splitting up our array. We're letting the left side of the array is going to uh, equal, we're creating a new array and it's from our existing array. 
And then the indices we're taking, what I've highlighted here, is we're gonna take from index zero all the way up to, but not including, that's what this dot dot less than means. Um, so real quick, if you do dot dot less than, that means you're taking up to, but not including the last value. However, if you just did dot dot dot, like three dots, that means you're including the last value. We don't want to include the array.count divided by two, which is the middle index, because that's going to be included in the right-hand side of the array. So, uh, so we're going to take zero up to, but not including, array.count divided by two, which is the middle index, and that's going to be our left side of the array. And then very similar on the right side of the array here, uh, same thing, we're creating an array, except this time the indices we're taking uh, are array.count divided by two, and we're including that, remember, because we went up to, but not including, uh, array.count divided by two. So now we're including that in the right hand side of the array. And then we're going up to, but not including array.count. Uh, and the reason we do not including is because array.count is always gonna be uh, one extra number because arrays start at zero, not at one. So for example, if you have 10 objects in the array, array.count is gonna be 10. However, the highest ind index is going to be nine because arrays start at index zero. Okay, so that's it, we've split up our array. Uh, again, we're gonna come back to this function when it comes time to uh, return the sorted array, because here on line 13, uh, this is where we're actually gonna run our merge function and call it recursively. You'll see what I mean when we come back to it in a little bit, but for right now, we're gonna leave it blank and move on to our merge function. All right, so our merge function has to take in two arrays. Let me write out the function signature now. So again, we're taking in two arrays here. We're just calling it left and right. So we have our left array of ints and then our right array of ints, and then we're gonna return our combined array of ints. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to create three variables. We need our merge list, which is going to be our merged array from the two arrays. And then we're gonna need a left and a right, which basically makes the arrays that we passed in through the parameters mutable. Because by default, what we pass in here and left uh, and right, these are immutable arrays. So let's go ahead and write that up. Okay, so like I said, line 19 here, we have our merged array. This is what we're going to build uh, as we go through the code. And then right here on lines 20 and 21, we're basically just taking our parameters that we passed in, these two arrays, and by creating vars that are equal to those arrays, now this left and this right are gonna be mutable arrays because we're gonna be altering these arrays as we go. And then now for the final part, we just need a while loop. Let me type that up and then we'll walk through it. So let me explain lines 23 to 30. So the condition for our while loop is while the left dot count is greater than zero, and, which means both of these has to be true, right dot count is greater than zero. So we're only gonna run this for loop if there's elements in both the left array and the right array. And as you saw in the illustration, we're gonna compare the first element in the left array against the first element in the right array. And then if the first element in the left array is less, now we're gonna go ahead and run line 26 where we're gonna append that element from the left array. And we're gonna do that using a method called remove first. What remove first does is it pulls off the first element of the array and then basically shifts everything down. For example, if my array had the numbers one, two, three in it, and then I removed first, I removed the one, now my array only has two and three. So again, what line 26 is doing, it is basically just taking that first element from the left array and putting it into the merged array. And conversely, on line 28 here uh, in our else statement, this is gonna execute if the element in the right array is smaller. So again, merge array dot append, uh, and then we're just gonna remove the first item and put it in the merged array from the right array. So all we're doing is comparing the first element in the left array to the right array. Whichever one is less, we're gonna append that to the merged array, and then we're gonna keep on repeating that until we hit the condition on our while loop, which is that both of the arrays have at least one element. So now you might be thinking, well, what if after all this sorting, the left array still has, you know, four elements left in it and the right array has zero elements? That's fine, because we can just append the entire content of the left array to the end. And actually, let me go ahead and type this out so it makes more sense. So here we're gonna return uh, merged array, and then we're gonna append on the left array and then append on the right array, whatever is left in it, because this also could be empty. And back to what I was saying, if the left array still had four elements left in it and the right array had zero, we know the elements in the left array are ordered. Because remember, the very first thing we did in merge sort was split everything into its own array. So each number had its own array. So at this point, we know that if an array has more than one number, it's already been sorted. So that's why in that situation where if the left array has four numbers left and the right array has no numbers left, we can just go ahead and append the entire contents of the left array uh, or right array if that is the case. So just to drive the point home, in that example where the left array had four numbers remaining, um, what happens here, what we return, is we return the merged array, so everything we built, and then we append on the entire contents of the left array, which is those four numbers remaining, and then we add the right array, which has nothing in it. So this is kind of like adding zero to, to a number in math. All right, so let me give one more quick recap on this whole function. So we're taking in two arrays, a left array and a right array. Now we're creating our merged array, which is what we're gonna build as we sort these numbers. And then these two variables here are just to create arrays that are mutable, based on our left and right array. 
And then here in our while loop, this is where we compare the first element of each array, and whichever one is smaller, we append it to our merged array, and that's how we get the ordered merged array. And then on line 32, we're returning the merged array plus you know, whatever's left from our left and right array that are already in order. So this is how we're sorting and merging two arrays. Remember how I said we're gonna write about 90% of this function, write this whole function, and then come back? So now here's where we need to call the merge function we just wrote. Okay, so here line 13. It's a long one, but it can be broken down pretty easy. So remember this merge sort is returning uh, an array of ints. So we need to return an array of ints here on line 13. Well, our merge function here also returns uh, an array of ints. So that's what we're doing. We're returning the result of this merge function. And then as you can see, a merge takes in a left array and a right array. And this is running merge sort uh, what's called recursively, which means it keeps calling itself. So basically it's gonna keep running merge sort on this left array right here. So let's say this left array has 10 elements in it after we split it up. So, so this main one had 20 in it. So now our left one only has 10 because it's the first half. So this is gonna run merge sort repeatedly. Remember I said what merge sort does is it keeps splitting the array until each number in the array is in its own array. So that's why you keep running this recursively. This will keep splitting the array until each number is in its own array. So that's what we're running here on line 13 is the result of recursively running merge sort on each side of the array. And then finally, once we've done that, uh, we go ahead and merge uh, the left and right side of the recomposed sorted array. All right, let's test it out. Um, so let me create a large random list here real quick. Okay, so what I've done here on line 35 to 40 is I just uh, created a quick uh, array. And then here I did a for loop where I'm just creating a random int uh, where the upper bound is 1,000 and then just appending that random int. So basically we're gonna get an array of 50 random integers, zero to 1,000. So let's go ahead and print that real quick, just so you guys can get a visual of what we're looking at here. So as you can see down on my console, uh, just a bunch of random numbers, zero to 1,000, not in order uh, at all. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and, there might be a better way to do this, but I just do this when I want a space, just do an empty print statement. Um, so now let's go ahead and print merge sort. So print, uh, we're gonna run merge sort, and the array we're gonna pass in is numbers, which I just created. And this should sort that array of numbers. Yep, so again, this first one is the unsorted array. And then, uh, you know, this space is that empty print statement. And then now here I ran merge sort, and look, all these numbers, all these 50 numbers are sorted. So that is a recursive version of merge sort written in Swift. All right, so that's merge sort in Swift. There are more Swift coding challenges on the way. If you found this at all useful, go and hit subscribe. I put out new videos all the time.